You ever just know exactly what your shot is, but then someone's standing directly in it and won't move and is sending text messages? And it almost feels like that person knows what they're doing and they're just kind of doing it to be annoying. Hi, I'm Lou, and this is a story about the first time I shot a short film on Super 8. So first off, if you haven't seen this short film, which we're calling At Long Last, it's over on the Nailed It Network, which is a YouTube channel where I upload short films that my friends and I work on together. If you haven't already seen the short film, this behind the scenes is gonna spoil the story, so pause this video, go watch it, and then come back. And subscribe to Nailed It while you're there, that'd be really cool. Welcome to Nailed It Vlogs. Welcome to Nailed It Vlogs! Ah! I like paint. So we hopped on the 6 train and took it down to Grand Central. I kind of planned this video out almost the same way I would a day shooting for a Sweet Lou photography video where I would kind of just go place to place to shoot some film and then move on to the next location. So Saturday was our big city day and Sunday would be our more mellow day at Keith's place. I did a tiny bit of shooting on the train, but I just kind of assumed the motion would make this borderline unwatchable, so I didn't want to really waste too much of my film here. And a quick reminder, these Super 8 cartridges have 50 feet of film on them, which is roughly 3 minutes of footage. I will say though, I'm really glad I experimented here. I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but Keith and I agreed that we wanted to try and keep this as close to a traditional editing process as possible. So no crazy color correction, nothing like that, just chops and basic dissolves, or crossfades, whatever you want to call them. We were actually going to get rid of the motion blur shot, but then we realized that the dissolve to Grand Central made the perfect transition, at least in our opinion. Once we got to Grand Central, I switched from my 50D, my daylight balanced film, to my 200T, my tungsten balanced film. I figured we were indoors and we needed something a little bit more sensitive to light, but this little swap right here would come back to bite me in the ass in a few, so <laughs> we'll get to that. We got a few quick shots at Grand Central and that was kind of the feeling of the day. It was very spontaneous and just saying, hey, we shoot over here, hey, we're gonna go over here, hey, we're gonna do this. There wasn't a storyboard, I just kind of had it in my head along with Keith. And that's honestly how most of our shoots go. We're very much on the same wavelength and we usually know what things are gonna look like as they go. Keith more so than me. These shots actually didn't make it into the final cut. And this one I especially wanted to share just because I thought it was particularly funny. Brian and Allison's reactions were... Oh. All right, Brian, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna look unhappy during this. <laughs> you gotta act, you're, you're acting. Oh. <laughs> you got I, I thought it was funny. But we opted for them kissing instead of the selfie because it was just, I don't know, it's a better shot. Because we were going outside, it was at this point that I switched back to my first roll, the 50D, and I made a horrible realization. When you pop these cartridges out and put them back in, the indicator on the side of the camera resets to the starting point. So if you didn't take note of how many feet you already used, effectively now it says you're at zero and you have no idea how much you've used. As a result of this, I definitely wasted probably like two minutes, which that hurts. That's very <laughs> unfortunate. Want, want, want to move up to yeah, past go beyond the, the bikes. Yeah. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Action. I found it was really difficult to keep the camera steady while we were doing these walking tracking shots. So this one's the only one that made the cut, but there were a couple of others. Thirteen. Go 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 go. Okay. Fans are gonna need to be burned after this <laughs> And as we walked to Times Square, anything that stood out to us, we grabbed a shot of real quick. What's that? It's hearing? Okay. Yeah, because it's Sigma. Yeah, what? Because we're like right at 30. Wrong. See what I mean about switching out the rolls being a problem there? I probably had a little less than 20 feet there, which is why it'll run out later on, spoiler alert. But you live and you learn. <laughs> More film. Bottom text. We didn't really stay that long at Times Square just because of the volume of people, but we got our shots and we got out. I gotta say, seeing the modern Times Square on Super 8 is just a really awesome juxtaposition. I love seeing like the new monitors and the newer cabs and buses going by, and these are probably some of my favorite shots. You will see my actual favorite shots in just a few minutes. But first, on the way back to the train, we stopped at Bryant Park. While we did quite a few shots here, we only used a couple of them. Throw it in! But we did have something by the fountain, which I really liked, but it just, it didn't 
I don't know, it didn't quite fit in there. And it was one of those, we either used one or the other type shots, but the close up was obviously the better shot, but you couldn't really tell that they were by the fountain. And then the wide shot was just too wide. So we ultimately ended up scrapping both of them. <laughs> I missed like the best part. They had this really beautiful natural kiss that I completely missed, so I made them do it again. It's like that meme, now kith. <laughs> no, oh, oh, get ready, get ready, get ready. All right, ready? Three, two, one, action. There was a whole lot of waiting for people to clear out so Brian and Allison could walk somewhere without people interfering, so when we did have that split second, it was very much a case of go, 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 right now. <laughs> But this one ultimately didn't matter because we didn't use it anyway. It was just a little too wide and I don't know, wasn't in love with it. There was also a walking shot which was just not very good, <laughs> so that went. After Bryant Park, we hopped on the F train and went down to Brooklyn. Wow. Wow. Excellent. As we arrived in Brooklyn, we were joined by that moment in the day that I think if you've ever made a film before, you're familiar with. That moment where everyone is just kind of going crazy. Because we've been at it for a while, we're getting tired, we're getting hungry, our brains are getting a little funky. So we stopped for coffee. We stopped at Brooklyn Coffee Roasters, which by the way, awesome cup of coffee, not sponsored. And I did shoot a little bit in there, but we didn't end up really using any of it. I will say though, happy I got the coffee. After the coffee, we started walking down by the water. Now this was all part of the plan. We were there just in time for sunset. The golden hour light was magical. These were some of my absolute favorite shots. We ended up filming in this area for quite a while, so it was actually difficult to choose the best of the best. As the sun got lower on the horizon, the light just really got perfect. It shined right through the bridge, it reflected nicely on the glass buildings behind us, and the skin tones just looked beautiful. I really, really love these shots. I tried to vary the exposures too. I metered off the sky for some of them, I metered off their faces for others, just to see the different range in colors that I could get. And I gotta say, some of the underexposed shots look Wow, so beautiful. <laughs> but I can't even explain the tones. We just got super lucky. The light was perfect. We got there at the right moment and we really only had one obstacle. I am so grateful for the timing. We were starting to lose light, so we did a couple more shots as we were walking back to the train. We did a couple by the carousel, and I really loved the bouquet behind them, but ultimately we ended up cutting it out just because that section was getting a little bit too long. We also found this heart thing that you're supposed to stand inside to take pictures in, but Keith and I agreed that it was kind of out of place and we wouldn't really know where to put it in the story, so I ultimately ended up not using any footage on it. Plus there was like a million other people around, including a wedding photographer, so we just kind of got out of there, but I don't know, thought it was cool to mention. I also got this silhouette shot of them, and I really wish I would have spent a little bit more time composing it, but we were kind of in a rush, and it was cold. I know, I'm making excuses here. I wish I would have framed them under the bridge a little bit better with the Empire State Building between them, but ultimately it just feels a little muddy with all the shadows there, but still, interesting shot. It was halfway there. Living on a prayer. And just like that, we were back to the train. While we were waiting, I decided to get a couple of shots because I assumed that we would need some outro shots of them going back home. And I gotta say, I love the shot of them with the train passing. Oh, Maron. I also should mention that at this point, we had this idea for a shot of following them from the platform into the train from the opposite doors, and we shot that maybe five times and uh, finally got it right. It was just hard to time because there was so many people, so much noise, but we got lucky on this one, I think. Three, two, one, go. Oh. 
We arrived in Chinatown and our goal was actually to get dinner. We actually did need food because we were dying. But there was a shot planned in there too so it was double productive. We walked through Chinatown and got some shots. It was unfortunately pretty dark so most of this footage was unusable to us. But there is some interesting aesthetic stuff here. Especially this one shot with the red neon. I thought it was interesting that as he passed by Allison kind of got eclipsed by shadows and it almost hinted at the idea that she wasn't there, that this wasn't really going on, but we ultimately ended up cutting that idea out. We had a lovely dinner and we were having so much fun joking around that we completely forgot to get the shot we needed. So at the end there we had to kind of refill Brian's bowl of ramen with like... <laughs> with half-eaten noodles to get the shot going, but it was fine. To get the shot I wanted, I had to go to the opposite side of the restaurant. Just a testament to the fact that sometimes you have to suffer through some cringe for your art. I actually inadvertently became a marriage counselor while I was trying to get this shot. You can hear the full story on episode 2 of the Sweet Talk podcast. I did shoot two other things, but bad things happened. Um. Might be hard to tell what I'm holding there, but that's actually the little metal piece that you use to control the zoom on the camera. You actually have to zoom in in order to focus, so that's kind of kind of a big deal that that came off the camera. And I'd also like to note that because this was a used, beat up, not so great condition one, the power zoom doesn't work either. So I kind of had to cram that thing back in there to make it actually zoom in and out, which made the rest of this shoot very fun. But wait, there's more bad things. Remember earlier when I said it was going to bite me in the ass later when I was switching those cartridges back and forth? I didn't realize that I ran out of film on the first of these two shots. The first one was just kind of a joke, they got stuck in the turnstile thing together and I just thought it was cute and that would have been nice to have but not the end of the world. But the second shot was actually pretty important. We had this really nice two shot of them with Allison falling asleep on Brian's shoulder and that didn't get filmed because I was out of film. But on the whole, Saturday was awesome. Fully equipped with a half-broken Super 8 camera, a little tiny bit more film, a pocket full of dreams and a bunch of good friends, we headed into Sunday. The things we were shooting on Sunday were way simpler. We were all in one location. They were just the apartment scenes. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. All right, we just gotta... Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Sandbag. Keith, can you, can you lower these blinds? Because I always fuck these up. You gotta to the left. I know, but it's, I still fuck the them left. up. It's all, it's universal. <laughs> I still, I, I'm telling you, I understand, <laughs> but I still fuck it up. I understand? Are you picking your oh, nose? <laughs> Ew! So, let's go over the move real quick, because I don't want to... We, we only have like 70 feet of film, so it's like four minutes. Oh! So we need to be really on point. Um, so after setting up, we just kind of went through them one by one. We did the stuff by the table. All right, fear down, phone check. And I was able to direct Brian through the scene because we didn't really need audio. Going in, we knew the phone shot was a bit of a gamble, but it was important to the story. The most important thing to me was being able to see that there were multiple texts sent, and you can see that, so that's all I care about. The focus is definitely a little bit soft, and honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if the frame rate was part of the issue too. When you have your shutter speed set weirdly, screens kind of tend to look a little off, and at 18 frames a second on a Super 8 camera, I, I really didn't know what to expect. So while the screenshots might not be technically perfect, I still think they work for the story. For the Allison reveal shot, we did very simple lighting. We used our limited edition Natara light stand and it just went for it. So Brian, we kind of need you to walk into frame. So like take a step towards Natara and then- Hi. There you go. Yeah. Cause I think you're coming from this room. Yeah, yeah. So your motivation, this shoulder, like be a little more straight. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. And action. Whoop. Shit. Okay, the light just came out of the diffuser. Yeah, really sucks. One of the last things we shot was the outro scene, and we actually shot it two different ways. Keith had the idea to have Allison move out of frame while we did a zoom in and out. Rolling. And action. Good jokes, good jokes. Everything's awesome. Okay, I'm zooming, I'm zooming, I'm zooming, I'm zooming. Allison, get out. Awesome. And that's ultimately the idea we went with, but we also had a shot where it just cuts back to Brian alone. And that, as they say, was a wrap. 
Now the production took place before the coronavirus, but by the time we got the film back from Pro 8mm, not sponsored by the way, we were all stuck at home. So Keith and I decided to edit this, we used Premiere of course, cause that's the main editor I use, but we streamed it over Discord and we were actually able to edit relatively seamlessly, which is honestly kind of amazing. Keith and I wrote the script for this a while ago, I think in September of last year, and initially the thought of shooting this on film was not even a thing. But this film was a lot more sentimental and emotional than we normally would do since we do a lot of dark zombie blood stuff. <laughs> That paired with the fact that I was watching a bunch of Noah's videos over on the channel Analog Resurgence and talking to my friend Noptop who does some Super 8 stuff as well, I was inspired and I said to myself I wanted to shoot something on Super 8. If you've been hanging around this channel for a while you know I recently tested out my first Super 8 camera, I just shot some random footage in the city and that's when everything kind of connected and I said to Keith you know what let's shoot this project on film. And at first we thought we would shoot everything concurrently on digital and film this way if the Super 8 footage turned out ratchet it, we would still have a film, but I ultimately decided against that because I just felt like both of them would get half-assed in that scenario, so we went into this with a very all-or-nothing mindset. And I gotta tell you, I'm really glad we did it this way, because I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. We took the script and we really brought it to life, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but we had a pretty damn good time doing it. I learned a lot about filmmaking. I've done so much video work on digital, but shooting on film is a totally, totally different ballgame. It's stressful, it makes you anxious, it makes you excited, it makes your heart beat really quickly because you know whenever you're pulling that trigger on the Super 8 camera, you just, you feel the wallet burning. <laughs> But when you finally get that film back and you see what you made, there's no other feeling like that. And I was absolutely blessed to have such an awesome crew to work on this project with me. I of course had Keith, who's my partner in crime, we make all our films together. I had most of the Super Dankness crew with me who, please go check out their channel, they are hilarious. Hey, me alone, you got someone right next to you. Stop being a bitch, Brian. Dad said don't say those words. Dad's dead. I had Brian and Allison who are just beautiful amazing artists and they're great actors and they're a couple so that really helped. And I had the band Conversing with Oceans which is fronted by my friend Alex along with Chris and, and Anthony and they made the music for it. I was just surrounded by awesome, talented, beautiful friends making this film and that made this experience so much more special. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this video was like a million years long, but I hope you enjoyed getting a look inside the process of making this film. You guys know what to do. Smash, subscribe, share it, give me a comment. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Like and subscribe to Sweet Lou Photography. The man.